Lucas. Hi. Good evening. How are you? I am doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you you gave me a little uh, a little play on your name there. Uh, the uh, so that so that our audience knows this is a Keep It One Hundred podcast, the all new uh, podcast interview show. We have uh, Shara D, aka I call her Shara Four. Can you give me the breakdown on the Shara Four? What is, what does that stand for? Yeah, so it's actually just pronounced my real name, Shara. Um, four was kind of my lucky number, and I love, I love like hacker talk, and um, you know, I came up with it like eleven years ago, and and a dead mouse was just starting, and I was like, you don't see many people with numbers in their name, so try to be different, and okay, so yeah, I'm just Shara, but it's spelt with a four in the end. So, so you're are you a computer geek? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I am a little bit of a computer geek, yeah. Well, it's you true. actually. The next time that I that we interview with you, because we're gonna definitely have a part two, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my uh, my partner, which is uh, uh, Terrell McBee, which is uh, the founder and co uh, I should say CEO and founder of Smart Computer Concepts, L.A., New York, nice. and also Las Vegas. We just celebrated uh, the one year anniversary in Las Vegas. Awesome! Congrats! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he he's definitely a computer geek. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Computer so, geek rule. Yeah. So he, when, when I told him about you and the Shara 4, he was like, oh, she's speaking my language. She's speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. So I'm more, on, I'm more on the hip side. So you know how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, so let's dive right into this, Shara. Um, I know that um, you had a new release come out. We'll talk about that a little bit later. It's going to be number three. I usually start out with a couple of first three questions that I talk about your, um, your previous, or put it this way, your old um, projects that you worked on. Then we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the current projects you're working on and then future projects. Great. Thank okay. you. Can we start with your, uh, how you got started? You know, what was that, what was that moment that you realized music was your craft? Cause you're, you're a vocalist, songwriter, um, oh God, you do so many things. I'll let you, I'll let you, uh, tell our audience about that. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with musical parents. My dad was a guitarist and a songwriter and my mom was a singer and they met because she was his guitar student back in the seventies okay. and, um, fell in love and they performed together all over. And I learned from my dad how to write music and um, I actually have his old four track recorder that like the no Beatles way. recorded on. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. And I'm so grateful. I learned so much from him and my mom taught me how to play the piano when I was four. So then when I hit 13, I started writing my own music and um, played in like at school and church and stuff. And then in my twenties, I fell in love with electronic dance music. Um, <laughs> I would go to Montreal. It's only three hours north of me in Vermont. And right. um, I'm like, this is a whole different world. They speak French a lot. Like there's so many different kinds of people and they dance till the sun rises. And it was just, it just struck me and I fell in love. My kind of people. <laughs> oh my God. You know, you just, I love it and I miss it right now. And I can't wait for, for all that again. And so I fell in love and um, was like, I can write this music. This is like pretty repetitive and simple a little bit. And I mean, it's a lot harder to master the quality of, of sound. And um, so I, I started teaching myself how to DJ. I wanted to share it with the people that lived in Vermont. I'm like, you guys, this is amazing. You have to do this. So I started like, throwing my own parties and um that was like 11 years ago and um yeah i've been able to dj all over since then rhode island and i was flown out to alaska a couple times played in london and that's really cool and um i play in rhode island again hopefully in a couple months we'll see with everything going on right now i'm just focusing on writing more music um so I've been working a lot with a new label called Yaiskamp Records and 
have um, been doing what a lot they, of vocal. What are they known for? Huh? What are they known for? This label. They are known mostly for trance music. I know that Armin Van Buren has some releases with them. Right. Uh, Paul Van Dyke. So I was super excited because, you know, <laughs> the goal is to like get with a big label. You know, I have a lot of releases with smaller independent labels and um, just really want to branch out more. So I'm like super psyched to work with them. They're out of Amsterdam and they've been just sending producers my way. They're like, we need vocals. So You're talented though. You're very talented. Thank you so much. You know, I'm, I do my best. I love it. I love coming up with melodies and harmonies and I just love it so much. And that's the, my dad and me, he was so good at coming up with harmonies like that. And what, uh, what is your, can I ask you a question? What, what is your dad known for music wise? Um, harmonies? Would I, would I know anything that he put up, put out there? Well, unfortunately it didn't really go very far for him, you know, and that was a struggle and okay. that, you know, was heartbreaking, especially now to look back and he passed away last Sorry. February. So I've been super traumatized, but I keep him with me. And oh, I deal with that too. My stepdad passed away a few years ago. So I do, I do understand. It's like, that's life and we're supposed to just accept it and I'm like what the hell and so I just listen to his music all the time and I'm like I just want to be even more successful in music like for my dad's sake and help his legacy live on through whatever I can do they're here with us you know that I'll always you know that. yeah I believe that yeah, guarantee for sure so, so I'm gonna dive into so your, some of your current uh, events that you, or projects that you have working on right now, because I've seen a lot of, you know, when I first connected with you on Facebook, you were, to, you know, doing a lot of DJing and, and you know, hosting some part, some watch parties and stuff like that. And I was like, this girl's got some, got some groove, you know? So <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm like an electronic nut, you know? Really? Uh, deep house, house. Um, nice. I go back to the, to the new wave days. So, you know, when I was in California, we, we used to go to new wave parties and stuff like that, so. With the funny oh, haircuts sick. and all that. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, house and deep house. That's actually my 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 shit right there. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, I watched you on one, one. You were doing one. Uh, you posted one show that you did, and not too long ago, and it was hot. I mean, the beat was so hot that you could just you could see the energy in the entire crowd. And then you got out there and start dancing. <laughs> yeah. DJs don't dance. <laughs> how can you not? I don't know how DJs don't dance i'm like i have to go dance oh my god i love this music so much it drives me crazy <laughs> mm, mm. so uh, some of your current your current uh projects that you're working on right now would be so i'm working on another track with these two brothers in france arson and cyan they're wicked awesome and we just released like you which you shared the video I, we made for it yes um I your vocal, came up, by the way, your vocals are hot on there. They are hot. Thank you. I didn't so know you had that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I came up with the idea for the video. I'm like, there's literally four parts that I'm singing at that moment. So let me oh. show me singing the parts. That was so. Yeah, because there's different, you know, harmonies, and uh, they loved it. So that's pretty cool. That's got a couple thousand views right now, and. Just trying to be more creative, like, you know, to grab people's attention. You know, you right. post a SoundCloud link, they're like, oh, great, another SoundCloud link. But <laughs> if you, <laughs> Everybody's if you put, on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. If you put a cool video, though, you know, you hope they're going to actually click it and and right. um, and fall in love with the song like I fell in love with it. So That's one of the next things that I uh, want to want to kind of venture into because I have some Hollywood people that are watching right now and viewing um producers and and uh music people actors and all that and they're trying to figure out what kind of show that it, that i'm running you know because if we put this up you know it was an idea uh on four seven uh of this month and we were sitting at the counter my nephew and i and i just have this creative mind and he does too and then on four eight we kind of touched a little bit more on it and i was like you know what we should do man we should have a podcast show he was like you know i'm it i can put this together just like that let's do it he's like watch me work watch me work so i was like <laughs> All right, all right. And then on 4-9, I gave birth to it because, again, I'm all about numerology. 
And last year, this time, I was helping on a, a book get set up, and I made sure it got out, put together by the ninth. And it's nice. published, and it was published and put out and done very well. We're at the NE's uh, uh, celebrity pre uh, gifting events. We're at the um, uh, Oscars pre gifting events. Uh, wow. Children's with a lot of people talking to a lot of people and getting that going. I really? haven't even started using that part of my, my, my people yet. So I got people all over. Nice. And, uh, so we put this up. Uh, you're like, you're one of our, our few guests that we've had since yeah. the ninth of this starting and uh, <laughs> we're going big time you know yesterday i did a i did an interview with um von che which is a uh celebrity chef who cooks for a lot of millionaires they did a big event and things like that wow but, uh, so we're going big we're going big but back to you because this is about you right now forget about them okay let's talk to you it's all good it's awesome you i love you got the hustle you are a hard worker <laughs> i love that i see all your posts and Oh yeah. You know what, you know, what really gets me, um, what gets me moving is I, I have a love for the craft. Um, it's something that I should have been into many, many years ago, but I didn't really realize that until late. I've always had the ear for it. A lot of people didn't realize how much I was into music. I've always, because when I grew up, my parents had, you know, the vinyl plan, you know, there, I, there was not TVs. We didn't watch TV, you know, if nice. we had a TV, you're like, Oh wow, you're doing good. You had a TV. We were, we were radios and vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah so your 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 um future projects okay so you just put out that uh the new one on on four seven what do you got in the works right now that's going to be that's going to going to hit us on the emd side or maybe on the deep house side so like more on the deep housey side i'm working on um Hopefully with Travi Trav, we did a really cool song called Work, which is out on Eport. And um, so we're going to see what we can do together. And then again, the brothers in France called Make You Mine is a really cool track. Um, they kind of sent me like, you know, roughly what they wanted the lyrics to be. And it's like all in broken English and stuff. It's so cute. And oh, they're, like, love it. they're like, you can like fix it because, you know you know <laughs> have it better english <laughs> so i'm like trying to piece together what they said and um i i love it so far and they love it so that that should be coming out and probably in a month or so okay. and then i've actually recently um signed up with this music distribution company that works with putting music in tv and film and commercials i'm kind of like branching out trying different things and going back to my roots of writing music on the piano and, you know, Sarah McLaughlin type feels. So wow. they currently, they have opportunities right now looking for music for like COVID-19 projects about mm -hmm. friendship and needing, needing each other. Right. That really touched home. Cause you know, I have a friend, especially that's struggling right now with anxiety from isolation. And so we're I texting every day in a group text and did a virtual movie night and stuff. I'm try trying to be there for as much as possible. And very important. Very important. So I'm really excited about that. That's coming out really beautiful. I actually got choked up listening to it. So I'm like, that's gotta mean something. If I, I, I get that feeling. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's amazing what music can do for your soul and to heal others and bring us all together. And that's one of the most beautiful things. And I, I love being a part of that. I noticed that you do a lot of, um, you're always trying to help um, some kind of uh, supporting people, young kids. What's some of the, the functions that you that you uh, promote? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I started a, a party called Devote in, um, 10 or so years ago, and I always wanted it to be helping some type of establishment. So I'd have people bring in like a can of soup to get in, you know, a non-perishable food item and then donate it to food banks and the local, you know, homeless shelter. Um, they've been so appreciative over the years and um it's just like if you can help with your project that you're already doing why not give back you know and that just right. was always my mindset um and i think i can give my mom kudos you know she would bring us to like um help people at the soup kitchen and stuff growing up oh, really? uh, okay. 
and always donating, you know, goods. And so I think I got that from her. I'm going to, I'm going to throw one at you and I know you weren't expecting this one, but didn't someone just get married? Yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I have the bestest husband in the whole wide world. What a beautiful picture though. I seen the pictures and I was like, that couple right there, they have, there's a light inside <laughs> of you guys that shines to the world. And I, I know. I was, I was so happy. What does he do? He's an incredible carpenter. Um, he's meticulous and just transforms incredible rooms and stuff. He's redoing our basement right now. He's, wow. he's you know, has to be at home now, but they're they're paying for eight weeks, which is so awesome. So nice. he's, he's like, <laughs> I'm working on the house. I'm like, yes. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm so lucky. I'm so grateful. I always say that. That's awesome. We got a lot it of people. It makes me laugh right every now. day. So we've got a lot of people joining. I guess well, there's a lot of people that love you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hi. So so let me ask this question. How did how did you guys meet? We met at an electronic dance music club in Boston ten years ago. Wow. At Underbar. It's a really awesome club and he said he saw me standing under a light in the club he's like oh this is a beautiful girl <laughs> and i didn't notice him or anything but once we we all left the club the club closed down i remember this like tall hot guy coming up to me and he's like are you going to rise after hours i'm like yep already going there <laughs> so we just go to the after hours dance till 6 a.m and uh haven't gotten rid of him since. Oh, oh, yeah, he's lucky. He's definitely lucky. A vocalist, <laughs> songwriter, uh, talented woman like yourself. And, and Thank your you. Yeah. So as far as, I'm going to throw one at you also. As far as nutrition, I know that, that you're very healthy. You're, uh, are, is it, I don't know if you're vegan or if you're, oh, I, mean, I am right. Okay. Yeah, All right. 100%. 100%. When did, when did that happen? Oh. <sighs> Four years ago, I cut out meat after watching Slaughterhouse videos. I'm like, oh, hell no. I am not supporting that ever again. And then a year later, I, I learned about the dairy industry and how they take the baby cows and, you know, it's breast milk. It's like, we're not supposed to be drinking breast milk from another species. We're adults. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And so I just learned about how all animal products are made and you know, they all have to, like, be forced to, like, you know, give birth, and it's, yes. it's so messed up, and honestly, it's 2020. We can make meat from plants now. We have almond milk, oat milk, rice milk, like, so I'm, I am a huge advocate for it, because it's, it's easy to switch, and better for the planet, and all the animals, and your health, and so right, right. I ended up watching, like, every documentary. I literally, like, ordered every book on it and i really studied it i started I can see a lot. you being that person <laughs> yeah i kind of went crazy but i'm super but you're passionate, passionate. you're passionate about everything you're passionate about life yeah and that's the kind of people i i love being around and talking to because I, I noticed that you're all about helping others and pushing them up and you know once you get to a point it's kind of like what our show is all about our show is all about it's, it's taking people like yourself and people that don't are not not as uh well known as yourself and and once we get up to a certain point we reach back and pull them up yeah i and i love that you do that and help you know lift people up and you know you have a great soul and i can tell it's good vibes oh for yeah sure. yeah good vibes only <laughs> so awesome. one day one day i'll be out that way and you get, you'll have to take me out you and your husband to some of these some of one of your sets or something like that and that'll be a lot of fun for sure, hell yeah, yeah! I don't like to sleep much when it, when it, when, I'm, when I hear that music. You want to be up for, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I got some friends out in Vermont, so from, really, for, yeah. When I when I was doing uh, uh, the uh, uh, vacation ownership business, we had uh, been doing business in Vegas for a long time. One of my one of my good friends, Randy Bates, uh, is from Vermont. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, huge family, huge family, and then a few other friends are from Canada, which is up that way. So, you know, you know the deal. And they're, 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 
They're good old boys. They're fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Let, let me ask you this question. Uh, as far as um, sisters, brothers, how, you have sisters, brothers. I don't know that much about you. I just I know your music side, and I know your heart, and I, and I feel you when you when you DJ. But what about family, uh, brothers, sisters? Yeah, I have um, I have an older brother in New York. Um, he's like a financial type guy, and he also started um, Santa's Nights, which gives back and gives like martial arts to kids for free. And oh wow! Okay. So. It's really cool to see him giving back like that. Um, yeah. And I have a brother. He's becoming a dentist in Boston College. He's awesome. Wow. And okay. a, a stepsister who's a nurse. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool blended I, family. I can tell you guys are very close, though. And just in the pictures, you can see a lot. I see, I see through the eyes, and I, I can feel people. So definitely, I can tell how close you guys really are, you know. Yeah, I'm all about family, for sure. Family and friends. Hey, let me ask this. Um, this had to be a different kind of Easter for you. How did you uh, spend your Easter? Because I know that I asked that question to a few other people, and it was in all my years of being here on Earth, and it's been some time, um, this has been the most, uh, had to be, it's so different uh, compared to everything else. It was like a stillness. I know. It's crazy. Um, yeah, we just chilled and did housework unfortunately <laughs> we usually do like easter egg hunt you know with my family and big dinner so it was boring and sucked oh uh, hey can i can i i'm gonna ask one favor and i don't know if you can do it or and you can always say no to me i've no one's ever said no to me but you can say no to me <laughs> but can, uh, can, could you hum a few bars of that new release that you have I know you didn't warm your throat up or anything, but just kind of give us an idea of, of what's it like. Wow, put on the spot. Let me see, let me pull it up and I can get the key at least. Okay. See, this is a real professional. <laughs> oh, I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> oh, my light is pretty bright. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to show you that four chalk I was talking okay. about. Cool, cool, cool. Why, 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 why? She's getting set up, guys. I just want to let you know you're on a Keep Up Productive podcast, the all new uh, podcast interview show with your host uh, J.R. Robertson and Sarah McBee. There we go. I'm gonna let her do her thing. I okay. love that. Okay. This part with all the harmonies. They asked me to do these like little hold out the note. I'm like, all right, I'll try. Right. Cool. I love this part right here. Never seen anyone, anyone like you. This is for my husband. Oh, I love it. Looking in your eyes, being with you. I've never seen anyone, anyone like you. Pretty good. That's cool track, track, right? Thank you so much. Oh my God. You I, like I it? Just, I got goosebumps. Really? I got goosebumps on that. Yeah, you know, you know when you really feel the music, only certain people get that, right? I know. Special I saw that article. That. Uh-huh. It's that true. Tells you, tells you a lot about people. It's just like Deep House, you know. I was trying to explain to a few people what Deep House and uh, you know, Soulful Deep and you know, all this kind of music. And it's like, it's, they don't realize it's, it's not, you know, that you just get into it. It's a feeling. It, it, it actually takes over you. You know, you can't just like fall into it. You know, like when I was living in, in the Caribbean of Mexico, Plato Carmen, Cozumel, Tulum for the last 10 years, I was experienced BPM 10 years. Oh. 
Do you know that was my backyard? I love BPM. What? 10 days. 10 days of house, uh, deep house, all kind of music. No, 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 no fireworks, none of that kind of stuff. It was all about the music, DJs and producers from all over the world. And we were eating tacos and then going out partying and then letting <laughs> them play. And you never know who you were with, you know? Oh, those are my amazing. people. It was amazing. Yeah. I, I experienced some something like that in, in St. Martin a couple years ago. Yes. My husband and I went called SXM Festival. That's a great festival. Yes. So yes. Sick. You know, I just, I love, I would choose that, you know, the underground chill mm -hmm. feel over like, you know, massive festival with fireworks and like 20 year olds sucking oh, up yeah. fires and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're in our 30s and 40s now. Something. <laughs> Some things have changed, <laughs> but I respect it all, and it's you know, all there, fun. There's, there's a time in our life where we got to put the glow sticks down, you know. <laughs> I know. I don't want to. <laughs> hey, you know something? I was just uh, living in Jamaica uh, in January up until this uh, COVID nineteen happened, and I connected with some people. They were they were just about to have in March. Um, right before I had to come back, um, they were about to have the first Deep House uh, six day, five, uh, five day, six night festival in the grill at this resort that I was helping run. And uh -huh. it's interesting because next door to where I was living at, my private condo where I was at, it was amazing, was Hedism. <laughs> really? And, yeah, I'm like, so, so I'm like, whoa. Whoa. But you know, Jamaica's like that. And I just, they're going to have day events, night events. And I was connecting with people because I was going to actually start a broadcast like this over there. And for, and it would have just been new to the first, right. number one, first time the girls had a uh, house music out there. Cause you know, they're all about reggae. Yeah. Yeah. They're all about, you know, the deep reggae and stuff. So I was going to try and do something well, with the guys out there. But yeah, I, that's, I had to come back you know, because of the situation, uh, but if yeah. it wouldn't been for what's happening right now, this show would not be happening right this moment. It's meant so to I be. See, I, I, I see the signs and I, I don't miss any signs. I go with it. You know, we, we run with it. So. Me too. Exactly. Just go with the flow. Sure. <laughs> Make yes. the best of it. Yeah. So what, um, I know that, I know that uh, a couple months ago you did a, um, a interview actually that was last year. You did an interview with some guys, two guys. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Um, God, it was a great interview. It was a radio. On the radio, Sterling, yeah. Sterlingology, and yes, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that, went really well. that went really well. That went really well. Yeah, that was awesome. I love Sterlingology. He's they were good to you. They were so good and kind to you. Yeah, and I love that. I love people, you know, like you that like want to give musicians a voice and help support them and that's exactly what this guy does you know on his radio show and i love that you know and i did that when i had a radio show for a while here locally i i would play friends tracks and stuff and it's like there's so much talent out there and it just it can be just about who you know and it's hard to to really get exposure so i just love people who've support their friends and give them go. you know more of a voice and i have so much respect for that well once all this stuff lifts you know i want to get you connected with some of the people that i know down in the caribbean of mexico because i got a lot of really cool friends down there and i've been really pushing up you know since like uh the year before last i've been it's all about pushing the women up right now and nice. uh, there's a lot of Thank women that you. don't get the, the the props that the guys get and they kind of shut you out and me and my big oh, mouth, man. they kind of get upset with me about pushing, you know, doing things that you're not supposed to. But you know what? I look at it like this. Someone's got to do it. I, I have four sisters. I got two daughters. Uh, I'm a father, you know, first. Um, I got grandchildren. You know, it's like it's time that women, you know, stand in the front line, you know, and make things happen, too. Because you know what? They are so much smarter than the guys. I know a lot of guys are going to hate me saying this, but women are already there before we are. They're just waiting for us to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see, I would, I mean, 
just try to think what the planet would be like if it were all women leaders like just theoretically you know would there be wars you know i mean i'm sorry to say you know, that but we're gonna start know. something if we if we continue this conversation we're gonna start something with our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> well i love that article i saw saying like which countries had the most like the biggest success rate with keeping covid19 contained and they all had women leaders i mean it's just a fact you I know guess. i just i uh i had someone talk to me today and i always you know check on things and I talk about things, places that I've lived in. And after living in Mexico, the Caribbean of Mexico for the last 10 years, I was looking at an article today that said uh, out of 126,000, I'm sorry, 126 million people in Mexico, I could be wrong, but I'm reading it, looking at this article, 546 people died. Wow. So when you look at the statistics and you start, you know, doing percentages, you know, I had this DJ who actually sent this information to me, one of my good friends, and he was like, you know, because I said, uh, in the beginning when this uh, pandemic came, came out, I said, you know, the safest place to be right now is Mexico. And people are like, what? And I was like, well, I, I'm only talking from experience because I live there, you know. Wow. So, so I can tell you they have, you know, pop-up medicine places, you know, office on every corner where you can That's get awesome. whatever you need to get taken care of if you're sick, you know. Nice. And then holistic, when it comes to holistic, I spend a lot of time in Tulum um, and healers and all that kind of stuff. So, shamans uh you name it i've been wow. around enough people uh, not just there but other places too so once you get connected to the universe every life is totally different you know you just you love it's all about love so everything i, I do is agree. comes with love you know I, even to my post i don't like anything that much anymore i love everything <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's great i usually do that too Damn. i know so um give me a, a where can we find your music at where can we find what's your your uh websites give me your instagram uh we got a lot of people following you right now and paying attention to the show i got movie people uh artists uh producers you name it i got them all looking right now where can we find your stuff at awesome thank you so sharp for music.com just put the four in there um and Beatport, iTunes, search Shara, Shar4, S-H-A-R-4, Instagram, at Shar4 Music, Facebook, at Shar4 Music. I try to keep it matching, keep it simple, and uh, I keep everyone updated, and uh, can't wait to share new music with everyone. Thank you. Hey, anything new that you get, you got you to gotta get it to my ear first. I love to hear stuff new. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah. I can do that. You know, definitely. And I, I will keep it between you and I. I, I. I can keep a secret. All right, cool. Definitely. I want to I wanna thank you for coming on tonight. I definitely want to have a part two. Can I get a yes on that? I can get a part two? Yes. All right. So I just want to wrap it up. Uh, this is Keep It 100 Podcast, the all-new podcast interview show with Char D, a.k.a. Char uh, 4, <laughs> which I love because I'm all about numbers. And four is your lucky number, right? Yeah. So uh, not nine is mine. Oh, nice. That's why I put everything out on nines. Only four is very important to be four and ten is important to me when I'm in Vegas rolling the dice. <laughs> yeah. Vegas has been very good to me. Oh, good. <laughs> I, lived, I lived there for a long time too. Nice. Yeah. So we're That's we're doing sick. both right now, California, Las Vegas. So pretty soon I'll be in Vegas, and then hopefully nice. I'll be back in Jamaica. <laughs> Oh, I want to go to Jamaica so bad. I've been to Vegas once. I don't remember much of it, but it was fun. Oh, yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> again, again. Thank you so much, hon. And we will uh, definitely come back with you and uh, we'll see what your schedule is like. I know you're very, very, very busy. So let uh, the audience know one more time where to find your music at, and then we're going to hit out. Just go to sharfourmusic.com or search Sharfour on Beatport or iTunes or Amazon. And uh, yeah, support your girl. Okay, girl, you take care. Okay, tell your husband I said hi. Thanks so much for having me. And this show will be up in probably about 30 minutes or so. Okay. All right, cool. All right, girl, take care. <laughs>